Hi, this is Scott from RedmondPhysicsTutoring.com, and in this video I'm going to go through an example of an RC circuit that has multiple capacitors and multiple resistors, as shown. C1 is 2 microfarads, C2 is 3 microfarads, R1 is 40 ohms, and R2 is 50 ohms, and the EMF has a voltage of 6 volts. Now, all capacitors are initially uncharged. That means that Q1 initial is 0 and Q2 initial is 0. So then at t equals 0, time 0, the switch is closed at A. I need to find the charge on capacitor 2, so that's Q2, 70 microseconds later. When I close the switch at A, the circuit's going to look like this. So notice at this point then, the current would flow clockwise through the circuit, and there would be no current going through R2. We essentially have a circuit where C1, C2, R1, and the EMF are all in series. Now, the capacitors are initially uncharged, which means that C2 and C1 are both going to charge. And this helps us choose which function to use. We know that when capacitors are charging, they start out with a zero, well in this case it's zero, and eventually they will reach a point where the voltage across the set of capacitors matches what's given, and uh, the charge versus time function shows it's sort of the, the opposite of an exponential decay. Remember, exponential decay starts off at some value, but then decays very quickly and eventually approaches zero. The exponential decay function is what you get when you multiply times e to the power of negative blah, whatever. And the charging function then is going to be 1 minus e to the negative blah. So that just helps us choose which function to use. I personally have trouble remembering, so what I do is I think about the exponential decay function because I know what that looks like, and I know that if I take 1 minus that, I'll get the, the charging function in this case. So then what I want to find is Q2 as a function of time, because I'm, I'm charging, I need to use the C2 charging equation, is going to be equal to C times the EMF times 1 minus E to the negative T over RC. And the question here is, what value do I use for C, and what value do I use for R? T is given, 7 times 10 to the negative 5 seconds, but I really need to be careful about C and R. The problem is that I have two different capacitors, C1 and C2, but this capacitor charging equation really is meant for a simpler circuit, where you just have an EMF, a resistor, and a capacitor all in series. But that's one EMF, one resistor, and one capacitor. So when we're applying this function, we actually need R to match this single resistor circuit, and we need C to match this single capacitor circuit. Luckily, it's actually not that hard. What we can do is we can redraw this circuit with an equivalent capacitance. So we'll have the EMF, and We'll have a capacitance that's equivalent to C1 and C2 together. And those are in series. So I'm going to call this C12. And I'll put the resistor on the bottom just to match what we had before. Remember, there was no current going through R2. So the resistor is just R1. And then we actually have a very similar circuit to what we had before, where the current was flowing clockwise through the circuit. Then the equivalent capacitance is actually fairly simple to calculate. We have C12 is equal to the inverse of C1 plus the inverse of C2, and then take that as the inverse. And after I substitute in, I get 1.2 microfarads for the combined equivalent capacitance of C1 and C2 in series. Now I can write the charging equation for the simplified circuit. So I have Q12 as a function of time is equal to C12 times the EMF times 1 minus e to the negative t over R1C12. And then I can substitute in, so I have 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 for C12. I have my 6 volts for the EMF. Then I have 1 minus e to the negative, and I have my time as 70, or 7 times 10 to the negative 5, or 70 times 10 to the negative 6 all over 40 ohms times the equivalent capacitance 1.2 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. And I get that Q12 at 70 microseconds is equal to 5.5 microcoulombs. So we're closer to the answer. 
The key step then is to realize that when the capacitors are in series, because C1 and C2 are in series in the original diagram, because C1 and C2 are in series, that means that Q1 and Q2 are going to be the same thing because capacitors in series always have the same charge. Now that assumes that they start with the same charge when you say that. And I have another YouTube video that I'll link to in the description that actually explains a little bit why. Therefore, the charge on Q2 at 70 microseconds is the same thing as the charge on Q12, so we have 5.5 microcoulombs. And that answers the first part of the question. Now imagine for the second part of the question that at this exact moment that we were just looking at from part A, the switch is moved from A to B. So we have the almost the same circuit, except now the switch is not connected at A, it is connected at B. Now I need to find Q2 20 microseconds later at T equals 90 microseconds. In this case, the current actually is going to flow. Now remember, we had the positive plate on top and we had the negative plate on the bottom for C2. The current will actually be flowing through the resistors counterclockwise. And the capacitor is going to be discharging. So because it's discharging, we have this exponential decay function from the initial charge eventually to zero, but we'll see how far it gets. And uh, so that means we're going to actually be using e to the negative blah as our form. Now, Q2 as a function of time is going to be Q2 initial times e to the power of negative t over rc. But I need to be careful because I already defined time zero as another part of this problem. So I'm going to write this in terms of delta t to make it more clear. So we have Q2 initial e to the power of negative delta t over rc. Now again, remember that this uh, discharging equation assumes that you have a very simple circuit. It assumes that we just have one resistor and one capacitor. In our case, capacitor C1 is actually excluded. Because of the way the switch is, there's no current going through the left portion of the circuit. There's no current then going through the EMF, and there's no current going through C1. So really, we can actually just focus on the right portion of the circuit in this equivalent circuit, we really only have C2. C1 is not a factor, but we have two resistors, and that means we need to use the equivalent resistance when we're setting up the circuit. Now, R1 and R2 are in series, so this actually becomes fairly simple. The equivalent resistance of resistors in series is just the summation of them, so we have just R1 plus R2. So we have our 40 ohms plus our 50 ohms, and we get a 90 ohm equivalent resistor. When we substitute into the discharging equation, though, we need to be clear about what we mean for delta t. Now, delta t is 90 microseconds minus 70 microseconds. Q2 initial came from the first part of the problem. So we have 5.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Remember, for the resistance, this equation counts on using the equivalent resistance, so I have to use 90 ohms when I'm substituting in for the resistance value, but because there's only one capacitor, C2, I can use the capacitance for C2 as the capacitor. So when I solve for this, I get 5.1 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and this is 20 microseconds after the switch was changed. Remember, I substituted in 20 microseconds for delta T, which means that this is the charge at T final. So I can say Q2 at t equals 90 microseconds is equal to 5.1 microcoulombs. And that's the end of the problem. I'm Scott Redmond, and I help students pass physics. If this video was helpful to you, please like it in YouTube to let me know.